As both a recruiter and interview coach, I've asked candidates and clients over 10,000 behavioral questions. And there's really one key to having better success with these answers. It's in your what's and how's. So let's talk about it. The most critical part of having a great behavioral answer really focuses in on the actions, whether you're using the STAR method, whether you're using the PAR method, everything will default at some point into actions. And so, well, what's the point of actions? Past performance predicts future performance, and that all comes through the actions we took to get there. So stick with me. The what's are pretty clear. The what's are specifically the high level action you took, and then the how's are what support that major action. So let's dive right into it. Let's bring in an example. So for example, let's say the what, the action we took, which usually the first action is gonna involve research and conversations. We might say something like, I researched alternatives to our current on-prem technical solutions. That's the what. Then we wanna immediately dive in and jump into the how. And we did that by scheduling and conducting intro calls with sales reps from AWS, Azure, and GCP. Then we also did it, the how, by speaking to our CTO to discuss the options of staying on-prem, picking hybrid solutions or full cloud solutions. And the third how, we met with our legacy software expert, Jane, to discuss the challenges of going from on-prem to any type of cloud solution. It sounds very, very simple, and it is. But now, let's add on to this approach. Let's make it a little bit more rigid, and while on occasion, adding a little bit of storytelling can add value, a little bit of color, a little bit of visuals to our answers, oftentimes storytelling and telling a good story, which is the advice you're given, doesn't really get into the how you did it. You might talk a little bit about the what, but not the hows. And so this will show up in a couple of different ways. So let's dive right back into those data points we brought up. Oftentimes, we get away from the how if we start telling and talking about what those sales reps said to us in those calls. If we go into the conversation with Jane, maybe we start talking about Jane's personality type and why it was so difficult to work with her. But that doesn't get at the question, right? Remember, the question is about going and figuring out how we research to figure out good solutions or alternatives to our on-prem. So what am I trying to get at? I'm just simply trying to get at the how. That support of the what is absolutely critical. Because when the interviewer goes back, they clean up their notes, they're going to have a much better understanding of you and how you accomplish these items. And so again, while the storytelling piece can provide a little bit of context, a little bit of value, we're not really highlighting to the interviewer why we'd be a good future fit for this role. Because again, the indicator of future performance is all about how we've done things in the past. So I wanna take a quick step back. I'm gonna share my screen for just a couple minutes and we're gonna walk through the high level of this just so you can get a visual for what I'm talking about. So let's dive into our screen share. We have to foundationally take a quick step backwards. And so there are a few critical items that you're gonna wanna set up when you're setting up your behavioral answers. You're absolutely gonna wanna title your examples and the more specific and concise it can be, the better because really the goal here is to have the titles to your behavioral answers so that we can build them onto a cheat sheet and I'll throw a card up there above for the cheat sheet video but essentially you're only looking to really bring maybe your top five to ten examples to the table so having a strong title can be really beneficial we're not really spending time in this video talking about the situation and task but you're going to want to highlight your role in company any relevant details, think about this as more of a high level what, and this is gonna be a couple sentences and then your responsibility in the timeline. I always put timing in here because I always want you to be timing what you do, it's really helpful, but let's really focus our time in on the actions. And so typically when we talk about actions, usually most examples are gonna have a few 
core or key areas. So usually we're almost always starting with, and as I mentioned before, research, conversations, maybe some planning. Usually we're gonna do definitely some execution and testing, and then we're gonna present, launch, document, etc. So if we come up here, and the reason for this visual and why it's so important is, I want you to really get connected to these what's and how's. So we'd simply put our what in here, what was it that we did? And then we look at indenting bullets and we just write how, 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 etc. And typically when you think about any given action, you're probably going to have about three to five hows. But this will give you such a concrete idea of how you went about doing things. Again, the what is a little bit easier to say what you did initially, but the supporting is the missing piece of the puzzle and again ideally we're going to do this for these three categories and then as we come down to the results really this gets back to the what's what were the results and you're going to tie it basically to answering the question quantifying and qualifying really means bringing numbers in and then any repeatability but that again is very what driven and then if you want you can add learnings and follow-up questions this is a free template at practiceinterviews.com, so you can go and download this template for free. So, it's one thing to prep by writing these items down, but obviously it's critical to start to verbalize, to start to practice with some other person, because once you practice, you'll just get more comfortable with it. And sometimes there's a little added trick that you might want to introduce, especially initially, to get your brain into the flow. So when practicing, you might say, what I did was X, or the first action I took was Z. This is a good way to introduce the what of what you did. And then you might follow it up with how I supported it, how I supported that actions, that action or actions. Um, some of the steps I took to research were because these transition statements can help trigger your brain to really get a little bit more focused in your what's and how's. I know that this might sound a little strange, but this tip will have a massive positive impact on your success. I really recommend watching this video I did a little over a year ago to help get some of those foundational items down, and then you can come back and revisit this video. I really hope it helps. Thanks.